what's going on everybody it is your favorite auntie mo and we are back for another episode review of black ink crew chicago this is season six episode three i think it's world's greatest dad i believe so mm, that's what we're gonna call it <laughs> um all, as always, um, before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think about this video. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then hit the notification bell so you would know whenever I upload new content, of course. And if you're not following me on my socials, please do so. They will be in the description box um, down below. Um, this episode of Black Ink Crow was good. It wasn't all a step for the end. I was just finna lie and say it wasn't no drama in it, but of course it was some drama at the end. As, as we expect but you know what i like black and crew chicago so far because it ain't the kind of ratchet drama that you would have like with um the new york crew not nothing against the new york crew but of course i know i did not review the new york crew last season because it was just too much ratchetry for me for, for my liking for my taste buds you know but um i like this episode um i liked this episode it was good it was some people said it was boring but i liked it because it wasn't a whole bunch of drama going on in it but um Anyways, I won't make this review too long, so hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you, so let's get right on up into it. So we start off over at Second City Inc. Um, tattoo. Everybody's kicking back, chilling. They basically tell the Charmaine, look here, you need to learn how to do a tattoo. It's crazy that you're a tattoo shop owner and you don't know how to do no tattoos. But then the production asked Jess, would you let her do a tattoo on you? She's like, mm, uh, uh, hell no, of course she wouldn't because the bitch don't know how to do no goddamn tattoos. Anyways, so, um, Charmaine ends up revealing to um, all of her staff that she is pregnant. The Plug is like, who girl makes sense because you are blowing up and you could see it. I was like, damn, now if, if they didn't already know she was pregnant, it was like, girl, you could see her ass blow, blowing the hell up, getting big as hell. So, Jess wanted to do something to kind of celebrate everybody coming together anyway. And so, she was like, okay, well, we need to celebrate you being pregnant as well as everybody coming together in the shop. And let's just get, to, um, get together, get to know one another. So, she wants to have uh, a pajama party at her apartment, which... <laughs> in retrospect it sounds good but we all know liquor and pajamas and 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 niggas and we all know that that ain't gonna never be good but you know she came in with good intentions she wants everybody to get to one know one another so she wants to have a pajama jammy jam at her apartments so Charmaine and Nick are at their house. Now, Charmaine is trying to impress her Haitian mother-in-law now. Mind you, her mama is excited. She done went back to New Orleans, excited that she about to be a grandma. And, you know, she she happy. Now, Nick's mama, on the other hand, she's still upset because they didn't get married traditionally like she wanted them to up in a church. Nevertheless, they married, and Charmaine is trying to do what she can to impress her mother-in-law, right? So she decides she wants to make an authentic home cooked homemade haitian meal to give to neek's mom right so she in the, uh, in the kitchen now first of all neek walk up in there he was like dang if you want to do this baby you could have came and got some some pointers for me i couldn't let you know you know what to do so i like baby hold on i got this i got some recipes off the internet and i'm good to go i got this neek like hold on baby i don't I don't think recipes off the internet is really what's gonna cut it because you know my mama crazy so let's 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 kind of hold up and back up she like no mm -mm, Nick, no don't you worry about it i got this so y'all already know how charmaine do she hard-headed them mother right so she is in that kitchen trying to slave and and cook she done made the different dishes and this and the other right Nick, mama walk in as soon as she walk in she got her damn nose turned up and she's like oh what is this that she's doing? I can't understand what she's doing. And Nick's mom is, I mean, Nick is like, hold on, mom, you know, she's trying to cook for you. You know, she done made you some homemade dishes. You know, you hungry? She's like, I'm, I'm hungry, but the smell of this food, I just don't know. Like, she was wrong. She was wrong as hell coming in there, right? So, Nick is like, you know, she wants to cook you a traditional meal. You know, she's trying to make up to you. You know, mama, just, just give her a chance. She's trying to do something nice, right? Now, off the bat, she better than me. Because you in there, you, 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 you know, you're trying to press this mama with this meal. You pregnant. You tired and all of that. You could have went and bought some damn taco, a taco box from Taco Bell. Or went to churches like all black folks do with some family. Come over, get a big old bucket of chicken and some sides from H-E-B. Some tater salad or something and, and let her do that. But you're trying to impress this woman with her own culture and, and her, her food and all of that and she already tripping off the bat so she you know charmaine serves her the food and she talking about the food is dry and oh i need what i'm gonna choke she was wrong for that she was wrong as hell for that because again had it been me you know 
we the wind got some chicken and some sides. That's just me, though. So she tries to impress her with the food. Of course, Neek Mama saying that the food is all nasty, it's dry. Says she about to choke. She needs some water. So Charmaine gets pissed. She gets up and she walks away. And I'm glad for Neek because he, he stood up for his wife. He was like, look at Mama. She didn't have to do this. She trying to impress you. And you coming in here and you giving her attitude and all of this. And that ain't right. You know what I'm saying? You just got to understand where she coming from. She trying to do this for you. And, you know, when she gets up and walk away, Nick, Mom, go ahead and say, oh, she's upset about this. Why, why is she upset? And I, I'd have been like, bitch, you, you, you. Charmaine is good. Charmaine is good. Her mom and them raised her right. You know what I'm saying? Not saying my mom didn't raise me right. But my mama did tell, tell me, you know, stick up for myself. She did tell me to respect my elves. But at the same time, Again, bitch, I could have went and got you some goddamn taco box, but I'm, I'm trying to do something nice for your ass. Now, later on, Charmaine ends up coming in the house, and Neek's mom is in there in the kitchen, and she's cleaning up or whatever, right? Now, Charmaine is like, look here, I just want to let you know, I understand that you're upset because me and Neek didn't get married traditionally in the way that you wanted us to do that, but the fact of the matter is, I'm his wife, we are getting ready to have a child, and I just need you to understand that you need to respect me and not be out here, you know, disrespecting me and doing that and other, and whatever it is that you're mad about, you're just going to have to get over it. Now, Nick, Mama going to have the nerve to say, you know, I love you and I appreciate everything that you're trying to do, but I just want to make sure that my grandchild is going to be raised right. Now, I was with Charmaine, like, hold on, look here, Mama. You don't raise your babies. This one right here, D nigga, this one right here, this one is mine. And you can't come at me sideways about how I'm going to raise my baby. But, you know, she does end up apologizing to Charmaine, saying that she loves her and she didn't mean to offend her in any kind of way. But, you know, Nika's her only child. That's her only son. They both only child. I mean, only kid. So, you know what I'm saying? And you would think that. Neek's mama would have some sort of on uh, some sort of understanding because Charmaine is the only child too. But Charmaine's mama is a little bit more understanding than Neek's mama is. God rest Charmaine's mama soul. She in heaven right now, my mama. Oh, bless him, bless him, bless him. But anyways, she does end up apologizing to Charmaine and telling her that she loves her and that she does want the best for the both of them and that she's there and she loves them and she respects them and all of that. Which was good. It was cute. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, damn. Damn. Ron is at the shop um, chilling with his son, Mason, right? And that's when Rachel walks in. Rachel tells Mason, you know, go on over there and chill. I'm finna talk to your daddy for a minute. Now, Rachel asks Ron, what's up? You know, what's been going on with you? At first, he tries to say nothing. He's just chilling. Everything is good. Y'all know, like, Ryan, how, like, you, see, you know, like how he has to do. Like how he likes to do. I can't get that out of shit. He likes to hide everything and keep everything. And Rachel was like, no, nah, nigga, I can see something is going on. Let me know what the deal is. Because, you know, Mason told me that she's sleeping over here at the shop. So he finally does tell her that she's sleeping at the shop. He was hoping that he can mend things in their relationship and hopefully be able to work things out and be able to come back over to the house, you know, with them and be in the house with his family, that and the other. Long story short, Rachel was like, look, nigga, here, you fronted on the whole relationship when we was together. You was out here doing whatever the hell you wanted to do, lying, and now you realize you're wrong and I'm supposed to take you back. Now, the shade of it all is when the production plays flashbacks of him and Kat in the shower when they messed around, and then when Kat told Rachel about when they messed around and how she ended up breaking up with his ass, like, production was wrong as hell for that. So she's like, look, care you know the fact of the matter is that is your fault you got the money to get your place stop dwelling on the past and thinking about the shoulda woulda coulddas of the world and get you a goddamn apartment someplace that our kids can come to and comfortably be able to spend some time with their damn daddy and not be up here in here in the shop in a trap shop where they don't, they don't need to be at. You know, get your goddamn uh, place and, and get over the shit whatever the hell it is that you goddamn going through you know suck, suck it up buttercup I don't want to hear that goddamn shit now, later on, Ron ends up um, meeting up with his son, Mason, again, and they're at the gym working out. And it's a real cute father-son moment that they have. Like, Mason is asking, why is he getting um, hair on his chin already? And he wants to get as big as his dad, but he's scared he's not going to get as big as his dad. And Ron is telling him, like, look here, when I was your size right now, I was a freshman in high school. So, you're going to get bigger than me. You know, you're going to get uh, taller than me and all this and other. It was a real cute father-son moment that they were having. He was saying he's going to teach him how to how to shave because Mason was saying that he don't want to shave he wants his beard and this that, and the other it was just it was real a real father real man it was just a real moment real cute ass shit so he ends up telling Mason that he is gonna go ahead and get an apartment and Mason's face did light up it was really really cute and Mason said you know I'm cool with all that as long as you got a pool and, you know, as long as I got my own bedroom, you know, we can make the thing work. You know, we can make it do what it do. So, it's cute. You know what I'm saying? Ryan finally gets 
his hand out his own damn ass and decides that he's gonna get him a place for him and his kids and and the nigga ain't gonna have him up there at the trap barbershop i mean at the trap uh tattoo shop no goddamn mo so shout out to you ryan for getting off your ass and doing what you're supposed to do nigga <laughs> So we got Fly Tatted, Prince, and Jess. They all out riding around. Jess said the West Side Boys, Chicago, taking her out around the town so she can see, you know, what life is like over there in Chicago. Now, mind you, again, Jess is from London. You know, I think she's from, like, the upper middle class place of London. So things are kind of different. She sees the difference between the way people are treated, um, black people here in America, as opposed to black British, British people, how, how they're treated and this, that, and the other, right? So they took it to the local, you know, chicken joint and and told her to get some some chicken with some mild sauce you know she's like okay i'll chicken with the mild sauce anyways they teaching her about the hood that said and the other um i think it was fly tatty said he had just recently lost his brother kj was shot three times in the head while they were driving lost his brother gun violence just so sad so you know they just reflecting on the hood and you know different things like that so it was it was good you know it was just a kind of scene to get to know them and because you know they're good like i said they 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 knew to to the black ink world so we just learning more about them and like i said it was a cute little old scene or whatever i wanted some of that goddamn chicken when they went to that chicken spot i tell you goddamn that chicken look good for the motherfucker ryan does a tattoo on um one of his clients um i think his client yeah his name was jeff big old black cock strong swole nigga he does um a tattoo on him they were two pocket watches one is the first watch was the year that his father was born and the second watch was the year his father has died i think he said he lost his father to pancreatic cancer he was just basically talking about how his father was like his superhero to him he he loved his father he missed his father he didn't ever think ever think anything would happen to his father so when he lost him to cancer how you know how bad it hurt him and ryan was just reflecting on how you know he was glad that his daddy didn't hold any resentment so towards him when he kind of pulled away when he was in his own feelings about about, you know his sisters died when he was grieving you know this that and the other so you know ryan did that the tattoo turned out you know real nice i've said it once before and i said it again ryan is one of the best if not the best tattoo artists on these little reality shows that they have in Ryan, to me, hands down, is the best tattoo artist of all of them on there so the tattoo turned out really really nice um and it was on it like i said the nigga was dark skin too so you can see all the details all the coloring that he did all of that that tattoo turned out nice as hell dre and zach go on a little dinner day i mean not uh not dinner day. they go on a little picnic at the park or whatever right and this is like their first official date that they go on i thought dre is fro that she had oh that fro was cute and she already dark chocolatey and shit so it just matched her it was so cute so dre wants zach to keep their relationship kind of you know on the down though because her whole thing is it's never good first of all when you date a co-worker and then not only that she don't want zach to go back and spread any of their intimate details um of their relationship back to any other niggas back there at the job so she like look here i'm gonna need you to just you know keep your mouth closed keep this on the down low and you know what i'm saying we can make a do to do now zach agrees to do that but she he 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 seemed kind of bitch like so you could already tell off top that he wasn't finna keep none of that to himself because he just he just got female tendencies about him i'm sorry but he does and and, and i knew I, I i'm just saying don is at the house playing daddy daycare four comes over there to the house right i don't know what don went and did i guess he went out and ran some kind of errand or something something so um four was staying there at the house babysitting the kids now of course we all know from the last episode don wants Ford to get him uh, a goddamn wife and settle down somewhere has have him some kids and be married so he won't get arrested over the pussy no damn more because y'all remember four got arrested for getting the head in the car y'all know all that so um uh four is babysitting while don goes out and he runs whatever errand he's running child it is so damn funny DJ and Ashton are running for his ass ragged. And it couldn't have been for no more than a couple of hours that he was sitting up there babysitting their ass, but it was so goddamn funny. DJ and Ashton had this nigga running back and forth out of breath. He trying to um, show Ashton how to brush his teeth. He like, look at DJ and see how he doing it. Baby, Ashton like, I don't give a fuck what DJ doing. He turns and puts his toothpaste, tooth brush and ashton's eye damn it take that baby whole goddamn eye out ashton crying don coming back like hey man what the hell is going on for like look here i love me some kids but i ain't ready for no damn kids it was cool you know they probably gave them goddamn kids some mountain duels some skills or something told them look here i need you to act as crazy as you can for uncle four so we can get this shit on film and that's exactly what they did and it was cute but afterwards four was like uh-uh 
This daddy shit ain't here for me. He still ain't over Nikki all the way either. I don't care what nobody say. For the, he, that nigga still in his for her feelings and hurt over not being with Nikki. He is. And until he can get another bitch like Nikki, <laughs> he finna still be out here getting arrested all over the pussy because that's just what he do. So it is the night of the pajama jammy jam that's going on at Jess's crib, right? Everybody over there, they chilling. They end up pay, uh, playing, was it Truth or Dare? Long story short, I think it's Zach. Y'all my husband in there watching football. <laughs> y'all know how y'all men are. Um, Zach is, Zach keeps flirting with Drea. Now, mind you, Drea just said, nigga, look here. I want to keep this on the low, low. I don't need nobody all up in our business about our relationship or nothing. You know, relationship, none of that, right? He like, all right, cool. In that same breath, he flirting. He all up on dress. She like, nigga, look here. I said, calm your motherfucking ass down. Listen to what the hell I goddamn said. He steady touching on her, filling up on her, trying to get all up on her, right? Next thing you know, like I said, they start playing truth or dare, and Zach gets the dare for him to tell somebody to lick something off of him. And of course, he tells Drea to lick whipped cream off of his chest. She licks the whipped cream all off his chest. Afterwards, they end up making out, making it more than obvious. Now, after you just said you don't want him to, you do it and in that same breath. So now everybody knows that they fucking around, right? So later on, drinks start flowing. Everybody gets to twerking and, and showing out. Charmaine got her pregnant ass out there twerking, doing what she do. Shout out to Charmaine. I, I love the hell out of Charmaine. Big ratchet ass. But she still needs to get them titties in control. You need to get them in control now more than ever because you are now with children, okay? With chow. You need to do something about them goddamn fun bags. Girl, they gonna hurt somebody. Do something with them. So, Dre out there twerking, you know, doing what she do. Fly tatted. He end up smacking Dre on her ass. Like I said, drinks is flowing. Everybody having a good time. Next thing you know, Zach gets in his feelings because... Fly tatted, start smacking Drea on her ass. Next thing you know, these niggas end up getting into it. I'm like, what the way? What? Now, mind you, they both little itty bitty, little, little scrappy ass, scrappy, scrappy dappy do little niggas. So they both kind of arguing, going at it. Child, the episode ends from there. These two niggas end up finna go at it. Um, Fly Tatty gonna tell Zach, you sitting up here, you finna catch a fade over, bitch, that ain't even yours. I was like, oh no, he didn't call her bitch. Yeah, he called her bitch though. But y'all, the episode ended from there, and you know what I'm saying? It was, it was dumb, like... First of all, you don't shit where you sleep. I'm just saying they should have known better Dre and Zach than to decide they want to get in a relationship and y'all work together. So y'all should have known that there was going to be consequences and repercussions that came from that. But we going to see what's going to happen on the next episode because even more drama is going to come from their little relationship that they having from that. Y'all, if it was anything that I missed, y'all already know, drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.